uh, for our next presentation, which is on transforming NATO C4 ISR and cyber training, we've got Jean-Paul Massard. Jean-Paul Massard is the chief of the education and training service line in the NCIA agency and responsible for the management and delivery of all IT and C4 ISR related training to NATO and nations, including individual training and support to collective training and exercises through dedicated simulation and support. And the, and the school in Latina works um, uh, to his service line. Prior to this, Mr. Massar was the program manager for the uh, Bi-Strategic Command Applications and Information Systems program, what you may know as uh, Bi-CAIS in NATO, and oversaw and provided coherence to the implementation and execution of 60 plus projects funded by NATO Security and Investment Program, a, a huge program. In his keynote this morning, he will address the training challenge for NATO and nations as NATO modernizes both its infrastructure and application suite, and will discuss the opportunities and ambitions for modernizing the training delivery organized by the agency, in particular in the cyber domain. Good friend of mine, Jean-Paul Massard, please. Looking forward to your keynote. Thank you, Thank you Paul. Morning. Mic check, yes. Quack, quack. Good morning, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. General Manager, welcome uh, to, to this uh, speech. Today we're going to now talk about training. And allow me to put a little bit in perspective and set the scene for my training challenges. Uh, and after that, I will give you some of the solutions we're working on. NATO has as a political vision, political ambition, and has at the political level set in motion a number of initiative at a strategic level to really uh, face the challenges that were we're in front of us as an alliance. I think the Smart Defense Connected Forces Initiative, uh, and as well a lot of initiatives relating to cyber. And all those drivers has led to a uh, major acquisition and modernization program, where over the next uh, couple of years, we're going to really modernize our entire IT infrastructure, our C4 ISR application suite. And as you can imagine, from that huge modernization, billions of euros of acquisition in front of us, there's going to be an enormous training burden coming my way so that we can actually turn the kit into an actual capability. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is by really innovating ourselves at the education and training level as well to be able to face those challenges. Now, luckily, the NCI agency is also set up there at the right place in time to actually enable that. So looking in front of us as a, at a large training challenge, for the entire IT spectrum, but including cyber. So how we're going to do that? Well, we've set ourselves a, a vision, a plan, where we're going to have a two-prong approach, where on the one hand, we have the individual training for individuals, but we also have a collective training arm where these individuals then can exercise and practice those learned skills in major and small exercises to put that into practice. And all of that, of course, we would like to do in the modern approach of blended training. But there is more coming our way. Uh, it's actually a complex environment. There is lots and lots of moving parts. It's getting more and more complicated for our warriors at the different levels to actually face all that help from IT. Uh, it's sometimes not getting easier than in the past. Information management, the battle space, it's all getting more complicated. We're just in this conference focusing on the cyber angle, which again is complicating matters. So in all of that, we have to prepare these individuals for their future roles. Now, we're also faced with a political decision. One of my major training assets is the NATO CI school in Latina in Italy. And politically, they've decided that they're going to move it uh, from Italy to Portugal. But this, this political decision is now turning into a major opportunity for the NCI agency to really look again at the way we do training and how we do training for the future. Uh, we're taking the advantage of co-locating in the same new facility other training assets from across the agency locations and centralizing that. But it's not just about the physical relocation. But let me give you a sneak peek in what the new facility will look like. Uh, this is not a small building, major asset for the agency in terms of classrooms, facilities, auditorium. We're looking at uh, 6,000 uh, plus students on site, excluding uh, outside of the school in terms of remote training. Um, that is qu quite a capacity. Now, looking at our target audience in the NATO uh, military command structure of 25,000 people at least, who rotate every three years, so you see we're going to need that type of capacity to deal with, um, with the training volume ahead of us. 
but it doesn't end there with a fancy new building. Uh, we really would like to take the opportunity of this relocation to really do things differently. Uh, we're going to really look towards now a federated academy where we're going to pull together the other training capabilities of nations, of other organizations, of centers of excellence, where we're going to really work together in a collaborative and cooperative fashion to really bring all that training capacity together. Because being faced with this enormous challenge in terms of volume, we're going to have to be much more efficient and clever in how we're ordering and uh, organizing that. But it doesn't really end there. Um, instead of thinking of this training in, in, in Portugal, we really should think now that we're going to provide the training uh, through the NATO training cloud. And it's not going to necessarily be at that school, but it's definitely going to be through that school. And by applying all the modern techniques, remote access, distance learning, mobile training teams, everybody in every corner of NATO is going to really feel nearby the training cloud available to him. Now, that is a major transformation. That is a major challenge to undertake in, in not too much time, to really modernize completely the way we address the training challenge. The good news for us in NATO is that we are, we're quite late to the party. Major corporations have gone through this type of transition before, and we can learn from the best in terms of how we should undertake this type of modernization towards what is called in the jargon the blended training approach about the right level of digital support versus still face-to-face -face in structure where required. Not to forget the mobile training teams that we send around. We're also in the world of training looking at differently at now after, after care. Um, we, we know all too well that in, during our operations in Afghanistan, we had technicians that were in the field and they're scratching their head in front of a piece of equipment thinking, hmm, perhaps I should have paid more attention during the classes that I took before. Well, now we're going to be able to bring them online in touch with uh, the instructor, re rewinding the class and go, go through the classroom again as required. But, but as well, not to forget the partnering with, with industry, with academia, with other training institutes, it's going to be really, really important for us to actually undertake this challenge together. And let me go a little bit deeper on that aspect in the world of cyber. So this is just a small rundown of the courses, the cyber-related courses that we give today in the NATO CI school in Italy. Uh, five courses run a num number of times a year. Almost uh, 400 uh, individuals are going to get trained on this. You have to really see and look at this in the particular spectrum of the cyber training challenge. Uh, the, the part that the NCI agency does in terms of training is the specialists. It's a lot of the specialists that are manning the terminals all across the native command structure uh, and are there behind the, the technical equipment. Those are the people that we train. There is all kinds of other training that is required. Um, we think about uh, the legal aspects of cyber, the operational aspects of actor, the campaign planning, uh, and, and then even the, uh, the hackers and the, how we defend against them. There is a lot more than this, this small set of training courses that we entertain today. For that reason, we're going to expand the number of courses. There are next year, there is going to be a few more courses uh, added to the package. And I would like to point out the first one that is on the list there, the Cyber Defense Advisor course. And it has two interesting things. First of all, um, this is an ad advisor to the military commander uh, because now we're going to be faced with cyber-related scenarios. We have a bunch of technicians that really understand what's technically happening. Somebody needs to be able to take that technical information and go to the commander and explain to him what is happening and what are, what are his options. Yeah, uh, typical scenario, your email system suddenly doesn't work anymore. You want to inform your staff by email that it doesn't work anymore. Well, that's not going to work. How do you do that? How do you solve that? Um, so we're going to do this course in cooperation with the Estonian Defense Forces Cyber Range. And the Cyber Range, for those, um, there we're going to actually have an, an environment where we can actually play these scenarios. And this is a very good example of the partnering. There's a fully equipped Cyber Range in Estonia, and we're just reusing that in our class environment and partner with them together and they get the feedback in terms of the students and the scenarios. Uh, we get the actual live experience to enhance the course material. It's two interesting aspects to this particular course that I wanted to share with you. But again, I want to look at it in the wider picture on a little bit larger scale. Uh, in NATO, under the lead of Allied Command Transformation, we have been doing a training needs analysis across the entire spectrum of cyber-related training. 
And indeed, you should look at it from a, the strategic level, the politicians, what type of courses do they need, tactical level, uh, what are the technical specialists, and even the technical specialist that is somewhere in Brunsum and Ramstein in Naples that is manning the stations there is a very different uh, type of technical tech, uh, specialist than the one that is manning the NSERC and defending it from within. So th that entire range of courses was analyzed and gaps were identified. Gaps were identified where we won't have good offerings in terms of training. And out of that comes now a number of opportunities, at the same time challenges, but at the same time business opportunities, where, where there is really clearly an established need now and there is not yet a solution. So from an NCI agency perspective, we would look and take that opportunity and really now look at the outstanding challenges, what is where we can, what applies to us, what is in our remit in terms of technical support, technical training for the technicians at all levels and all ranks, go to an implementation plan and really do this in collaboration with the nations. There is a, the multinational uh, cyber defense education and training project who is indeed is analyzing indeed the, the, diff the curricula and building solutions. We have to do that in cooperation with that. But looking at it wider, we really need to come up with a full curriculum of, of technical courses relating to training uh, and, and expand from the smaller scale volume that we have to a much larger broad offerings that we will have in the years to come, happily coinciding with this new building and this new infrastructure that we'll have to actually deliver this across Europe and across the theater. Uh, for there, I open now to the audience in terms of the industry, this, op this uh, cry for partnership. Those that are in the training business, cyber training business, contact me and we'll see how we can now together um, form a formidable force to really uh, handle the challenges of the future that are definitely in front of us. But it's clear that working together, we can, uh, we can handle this but we really must step up the pace, as was said in the previous thing, we must innovate where we can, because we really need to handle this danger. And that was the, the short message I had for you, um, reiterating that there is a lot of training focus now going to be, as we migrate from operations to preparing for an unknown future. We're innovating ourselves at the training level, we not, not only through new facilities, but really through a totally new approach, federating and going into the cloud for where this training is concerned. And then finally, uh, reiterating my, uh, our ambition for this uh, cyber training curriculum with respect to the technical courses and, and see how we can do this together with uh, selected industries and academia. Thank you very much. And I open uh, for two, three questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have time for a question if anyone uh, wishes to ask a question right now. Do you have the mic, please? Colonel Talmayer from Austria, thank you for the presentation. I have just a question because uh, if you want to set up the training, uh, is it clear the capabil capability that have to, to have the people in the field that are out there in respect of cyber defense, what are the operational requirements out there? And so if you are setting up a curriculum, you have to have a clear vision what they have to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, v very good question. This is indeed what we do right now with the training needs analysis. Uh, from the training requirements analysis, this is a standard NATO approach to analyzing these problems. And indeed, in our ambition to go from just a bunch of courses to a curriculum, you really need to have a progression in mind. You need to know the prerequisites of each course so that each of the candidates is actually able to do that. But that's where also the technology will come in. Through online courses and e-learning, the, the, the candidates for a course can do the necessary prerequisite tests and courses online before actually traveling to an expensive facility to do a value-added course. So I think this will work out with, on the one hand, the analysis and the study relating to who needs what in terms of skills, and the other hand, the technology to actually offer it piecemeal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. That's all we've got uh, time for for questions, unfortunately, at this moment. Jean-Paul, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Brilliant.